This is an HP laptop that is scrap. Basically when it came in it was in pieces. And what we're going to do is we're going to strip it down to recover the gold and precious metals off it. The first thing to note is that we've already removed the keyboard and the screen's already separated. Rear of a modern HP, just pull those two apart and the base will come clean off. It's plastic, it's useless, can't even be recycled. Well they're saying that hard plastics, you might be able to get something out of it, you never know. Laptops have loads of screws. They're just full of screws. The idea is to basically clamp the upper case and the lower case of the plastic around the main board. The reason you want to do that is it makes it rigid. If it wasn't rigid, the main board would fail a lot quicker and you'd end up with a crap laptop. So, screws. Basically work your, work your way around the entire laptop, remove every single screw, and there are usually tons. So all I'm doing is I'm checking that every single screw is loose on the base. And once you've confirmed that, You should be able to pry So, now we've got access to the laptop, mainboard, fan, heatsink, and the process is located under there. Here you can see the two memory slots. These are the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules here. Hard drive connector is in there. This one's got a SATA connector. And then this SATA connector here is for the CD drive or optical drive, which slots in there. The first thing to do, remove the fan. The fan itself, laptop fans unlike fans that you'd use to cool yourself in the summer, are made on the cheap. The money that is sunk into them is in the bearings. It's not in the actual fan itself. So that's the amount of copper in the fan. It's virtually worthless and certainly not rec worth recovering. Send that out with irony or ferrous metals to a scrapyard. Heat sink itself. It's worth recovering the heat sink normally. I'll show you why in a minute. That is obviously aluminium because you want the laptop to be as light as possible. You've also got an aluminium radiator there. Basically, airflow through that, which is driven by the fan, cools that. And then convection itself will pull the heat away from the processor along that copper core there to the radiator where the heat's dissipated out of the side of the, of the laptop. That's why when you have them sitting on your lap and you put your hand against the vent, it feels real hot. Anyway, you've got aluminium, both ends, and copper. Down a normal car scrap yard, car dismantlers, or a, or a, or a scrap metal merchants, that would be considered radiator alley and that's about 1,300 quid a ton. So about two to three thousand dollars a ton. It's well worth keeping. The board itself, again, gonna be so many screws it's gonna be unbelievable. And this one's got a star on it. So 
sometimes it's not worth messing around with them. Unless somebody knows what they're doing. Unfortunately, in this warehouse, there are a few people that know what they're doing. One of the problems is that screws are hidden in all sorts of locations, particularly around connectors. The reason being you want to actually secure the connectors back to the case. That way, the connectors are less likely to fail. Because there's a lot of strain put on the connectors themselves when you're actually connecting them up to the laptop and obviously with flexure in the actual case itself, the connectors themselves are going to suffer because they're going to take a lot of the strain. So that's the main board off. PCMI CIA cage there. USB 3. So obviously this is a modern board. USB 2 there. Firewire 800. And an SD card slot there. Processor. On a laptop. Is a lot smaller than you'd find on a desktop. And it's usually a case of twisting that there, which obviously moves the entire cage across, which means that this processor itself is going to have pins on the underside. And I hope you can see that. There's all the pins. All those pins are gold. Not pure gold. There's a gold plating that's put on the pins. The reason that it's put on there is to improve conductivity because gold is highly conductive and also to stop corrosion because gold doesn't corrode. And that way you don't get any tarnishing which would prevent conductivity between the processor and the board itself. Well worth keeping down the refinery and you're probably looking at oh, I don't know anything up to 20 quid a kilo maybe 30 it's a modern processor so the gold coating that's put on these pins is a lot thinner than you would find on something like a Pentium 3 where obviously the legs themselves all these pins, the gold is plated at 200 nanometers, whereas this is plated at about 80 nanometers. So weight for weight Pentium 3s are worth a heck of a lot more than laptop processors. The laptop board itself, you can strip it down further if you like. Pushing these pins in will release the frame. That frame there obviously stops flexure on the board where you've got the actual processor cage connected back to the board by hundreds and hundreds of solder joints. So obviously if that was to flex it would introduce cracks and cause solder joints to fail which would cause the motherboard, main board to fail normally which is why this frame is put in. It's a reinforcing frame to stop flexure around there. The board itself, there's no point stripping it down any further. Obviously around connectors you're going to have gold pins. Don't remove them. Get the whole board itself refined because there are other precious metals on this board other than gold. So obviously there's going to be palladium, plat platinum, you've got copper in there, you can see the copper here. I mean copper is 3,000 quid a tonne. So if the copper is separated out and you're going to have copper leaf both sides of the board, there's sufficient amounts of board, you're going to make recover quite a lot of copper. There's also tin in there, tin used in the solder joints itself. Tin is currently retailing at £25,000 a tonne. So, refine the whole board, don't just refine parts of it. The rest of the board, the rest of the laptop, there's barely anything worth recovering. Obviously you can strip it down to get out some parts. 
some gold on there. They won't want the reconnectors at the refinery, so take them off. And this laptop, strangely enough, has a separate board for connecting the USB and sound. And as you can see when you strip it back, no gold on there. It's just copper connectors. Copper on the board itself. Tin, obviously, on the solder joints. Because this is a modern laptop. Therefore, it's Ross compliant. As in the restriction of hazardous substances. So you're not allowed to use lead solder anymore in them. The trackpad. Unless you want to sell the trackpad for spares, there's no point recovering it. You can always put it on eBay, the trackpad. In fact, you could probably put the top case on trackpad. Oh, sorry, on eBay. Trackpad. On eBay. So. Trackpad, again, is going to have a support frame. And the support frame again is going to stop flexing on the trackpad because the trackpad is going to have a lot of delicate circuits on it. The reason being it's got to know where your finger is at any time. So, off the support frame. In this instance, the support frame itself includes the buttons. So, can we get the trackpad out? Probably not on this laptop. It's certainly integrated. Yep. So this trackpad has been integrated into the shell of the laptop itself. Probably glued, in, glued, glued along the edges, which makes that worthless. And that's all. So there you go. So there you have it.